So, Rory, uh, welcome to Brent's Bike Social. Um, first of all, let's touch on last weekend. What a weekend it was for you. Was it something that you were expecting to do so well, or were you going there with literally no expectations and just enjoying it? I just went into the weekend, you know, looking forward to doing my first Grand Prix. It's, uh, you know, it's a pretty awesome opportunity to get at 20 years old doing doing my first Grand Prix at home at Silverstone. It was it was amazing. So, yeah, going into the weekend, I, there was no expectations from the team. There, I had no real expectations for myself either. It was just, you know, the bike's so different. The, the class is so different to BSB and anything like that that, you know, it, it's it, it was hard to, to make any judgment on, on how I was going to do. You came out of the weekend, I suppose, best in team, but obviously Cam crashed and uh, you were quicker than your teammate and beat your teammate in the race as well. Was that a nice feeling for you when you came in from the garage and that you knew that you'd done that? Was that a goal for you at the start of the weekend? I mean, the first person you always want to beat is your teammate. <laughs> so, you know, take that one off, that, that was nice. But, you know, I, I never went into the weekend expecting to, to beat anybody. You know, I would, I would have been quite happy. I think probably been the happiest it would be to get a top 25 in, in, my, in my life. So, um, you know, going into, into the weekend, there, there was no expectations to beat such and such or you know there, there was no rider that I quite had like a, a thing to do so it was just a case of, of working hard and just trying to pr progress each session and make sure I came out of each session a little bit further ahead than, than what I was when I went, went into, into it. Was it a big help having John Hopkins on, on, on your side there because obviously the experience that he's got it's probably invaluable in, in a first weekend like you had in GPs. Yeah definitely you know John John has a wealth of knowledge he's, he's been in that paddock since he was was very young younger than, younger than what I am so you know, John is a great guy to have in your corner. He's, he's fantastic at going out and spotting for you at the side of the track. He, he can catch little things that a lot of people don't see. And, you know, having that for my first weekend on a Moto 2 bike when, when adapting was key was, was really good. How much of a big difference was the Moto 2 bike to, to a super bike? <laughs> it's, it's incomparable. You know, there, there's nothing there that, that even resembles anything similar. You know, the Moto 2 is, is a purpose built Grand Prix racing bike. It's so stiff and the feelings you get, the sensations you get from the bike are totally different to anything else. And then obviously the superbike is a is a road bike that's can be can be converted to a race bike. So you know, it's it's, it's a bike with two wheels and an engine at the same at the end of the day. So it's they're similar but they're not. And I just taken it as something totally new. I didn't try to compare or ride the Moto Two like I was riding the superbike. I just went into it with an open mind and just tried to just tried to do my best. What were those first impressions like in FP One? Did it blow your mind a little bit, or were you a little bit? Oh, no, it's not as bad as what I was expecting. I quite enjoyed it, to be honest. I clicked on it really quickly, and I was kind of surprised by that because, you know, with it being quite a harsh, rigid chassis, I expected it to maybe take a few a few more laps than what it did. But, you know, I felt really comfortable in it as soon as I left pit lane, and it was a case of just building, and, you know, I didn't want to push too hard straight away because at the end of the day, it was FP1, and there's no you don't win a trophy for FP1. So, for me, it was just a case of building over the weekend and then seeing where we ended up. Does it give you a lot of confidence heading to Austria next weekend? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it's, a, it's another track. It's it's a different a different ball game altogether. With Austria being being Austria, it's a, it's a different track. It's, it's very very different in its characteristics to Silverstone. But you know, we did a good job at Silverstone. I was up with some front run, well, not front runners, but I was up with some guys who are very proven in that championship. So I think it's just going to be a case of working again from FP1 and just step by step, no expectation, no pressure, and just see where we end up. Do you think it's given you a, a, a very put you in a very good position? ahead of next year, shall we say? Or is it too early to call? It's too early, early to call for that. You know, I, I just, with these two wild cards, I, my mentality for it is, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna try my best. If something comes from it, great. If, if nothing comes from it, then I know I've gone there and I've tried my best and I've, I've thrown everything that I possibly could at it. So I'm just gonna enjoy myself. I mean, getting to ride two Grand Prix, I'm, I'm very, very lucky to, to be in that situation. And you know, we're having a great season here in BSB with FS3 Race and I'm really, really enjoying myself here. So. You know that's that's what that's what the job in hand is 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 racing here in BSB at Thruxton. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll continue at that and we'll keep working hard. The teed us up nicely then for questions about this weekend. What are you expecting from this week? It's going to be very hot, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, yeah definitely going to be probably one of the hottest ones of the year. I'd be surprised if it's any hotter than this. But it's uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Thruxton's a track that I might, I don't quite have as much track knowledge at as any any of the other ones. You know, I've only raced here in 2019 and 2021 there, so. It's, it's certainly going to be difficult, but you know it's, I've got a great team around me and we've been really strong so far this season at most tracks we've went to, so again, it's, it's like the Moto2, we'll just go out and we'll, we'll chip away at it session by session and just see where we end up. Do you feel like it's a little bit of crunch time now, you're fourth in the championship, getting close to that sort of showdown cut-off, do you feel that now is crunch time and maybe start racking up a few more podium credits? 
at the end of the day, I go out every race and I try and be in the podium. There's no, there's no point in the season. I've kind of been like, oh well, you know, I might just, you know, reel it back a notch for for this weekend. It, it's, I go out there every time. I try and be in the podium. I try my hardest and. Yeah, I mean, every weekend I go out and I try my best. So it's, it's no different this weekend, you know, obviously the showdown's coming, but at the end of the day, we've been strong all season and I don't see why we can't continue to be strong going into the showdown. It's it's obviously the Yamahas are, are still coming on really strong this year and Jason and Taz are, are coming back and, you know, there's a few other guys in the series that are, are really coming on strong now. But, you know, I, I feel like we can be right up there with the best of them. The guys put together a really great package for both me and my teammate Lee. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's, it's getting to the, the nitty and gritty bit, I suppose you could say. And um, yeah, I, I'm ready for it. What makes this circuit so unique as opposed to everywhere else? Is it because we only come here once a year? You don't really have any testing time here, if at all any. Is that the reason why it's so unique or is it because it's just so fast? <laughs> it's basically everything you said there. You know, we can't test here. There's no track days. We race here once a year and it is so fast. It's, I, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, one of the fastest tracks in Europe. So. You know, it's it's so unique to anywhere else in the UK. It's very, very wide, whereas you know, compared to like Cadwell Park, which is very narrow, it, it's it's chalk and cheese really. So, you know, it's it's very different the way you got to ride it, and with the, the abrasion level of the surface, it it, it takes into account the, the tire wear over a race distance. So, it's just going to be a case of you know just working away and trying to understand it. For me, you know, there's a, obviously there's a lot of guys in the series who have done. I've raced in, the, in this championship for almost as long, in, in superbike classes, almost as long as what I've been racing for in total. So, you know, it's hard to beat experience, but we'll work hard and we'll see where we end up. And finally then, this weekend, there's a certain Moto2 world champion here. Does that maybe put a little bit of, not added pressure on you, but a little bit of motivation to say, well, if he's won a world championship in Moto2, so can I, and, and I've beaten him? Yeah, well, you know, Tito's obviously a, a world-class rider, as you said, he's Moto2 world champion. and. I think BSB, the level over the last couple of years is, is skyrocketed. You know, it's it's very, very high. It's, it's a world renowned championship. You know, seeing Tom and, and Leon come back this year and, you know, struggling struggling almost to fight for podiums. You know, Leon's coming coming on now and, you know, Tom's Tom's getting there too. But I think it just shows in general the, the, the level of the championship. And it's, it's not just a national series. It's not just a domestic championship. It is world renowned and it is one of the toughest domestic series. Well, it is the t- toughest domestic series in the world. So, you know, I think Tito might have a bit of a shock when he, when he sees just how fast we're riding. You know, with no electronics on a track with this kind of speed and with the bike moving about, I think it's going to really show him that um, us British riders, we don't, we don't mess about. So, um, no, I mean, it'll be cool to have somebody there who's, you know, been a world champion. You know, Danny Kent is the same. He's Moto3 world champion, the first British Moto3 world champion, well, first British world champion in many, many years. So, you know, it, it shows the level of BSB and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Tito gets on because it'll be a good benchmark for, for what this championship is like against the rest of the world too. Spot on. Well, Rory, thanks very much for your time. Good luck this weekend and good luck next weekend in Austria. Thank you very much. Cheers.